Hello everyone, NadLabs here, and today you can see I am not in Godot, but I'm in GitHub, and that's because over here I have a very brand new repository saying Simple Svelte 5 Website, and what we're going to be doing is we're going to go click Show in Explorer, and we're going to be copying this path up here, so Control X to copy, and open up Visual Studio Code. Once I'm in Visual Studio Code, I'm going to open Folder, and I'm going to paste in the path that we were just at, and I'm going to click Select Folder, and now you can see we are, I'm going to trust the authors, and now you can see we are in our very own Svelte uh, repository, as you can see, or not repository, but in our file system. And we're going to be making a Svelte application. So over here, I'm going to control tilde, or if you are if you don't know how to do that, I believe what you can do is you can go up here to the search bar and you can search up, use the greater than symbol and search up terminal, create new terminal, and just do JIT bash or command prompt, PowerShell, whatever you want. If you have node installed, then what you would be able to do is if you can type in SV for Svelte, create um simple salt app simple spell salt five app and when we click that and click enter it does a bunch of stuff in the background and we click y to proceed once we click y it'll be asking us a bunch of questions which you can grab over here and expand and what i'm going to say is i want a very minimal project no demo no libraries and i will just be using regular i will not be using typescript just regular old javascript and i will will like to use prettier you don't have to use prettier prettier if you don't want to up to you I will be selecting Tailwind CSS, but again, you do not have to do that. In fact, I won't select it. I'll keep it super simple. I'll just use Prettier because I like to make everything look nice for YouTube. And I'm just going to click Enter. And I'm going to click Enter again for NPM. You could use whatever package manager you want. Um, don't click None. But I'm going to go with NPM, most common, most simple one that I know and is most commonly used by everyone else at the moment. And here we go. We have our project set up, and I'm going to do exactly what it tells me. So I'm going to CD into Simple Svelte app. So Type in S and tab to autocomplete. Once I've CD'd into it or change directory, that's what CD stands for. And I'm going to go now and do what it says, or I've already done this step, which is optional uh, by making the Git repository that you saw at the beginning. What we're going to do is we're going to do npm run dev. So once we do that, you can see if I open up an incognito tab, so I'll just bring it over to the side right now. And if I type in localhost, uh, 5173. Don't worry, this green guy won't show up. But if you type and click enter, you'll see welcome to Svelte Kit. And this is where your website is. So if we go over here into our files, you can see in source, in source under routes or roots, you can see page.svelte and welcome to Svelte Kit is over here. And you have this information here. And if we go control tab here to this website, it's the exact same thing. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put them side by side just to make things a little bit easier. And I'm going to rearrange my window. I'm going to control minus to zoom out of VS Code a bit, and I'm going to show you something really cool. If I delete this line and can click, can, or I didn't have to click it then, but uh, over there you saw that I had to uh, delete the line and it updated. But what you have to do is you have to click control save. I have auto save on by default after like 0 0.5 seconds, but you can see over here that uh, everything I type and I click control S, it updates over there. Now that we have our website up and running, what we want to do is two things. First thing we want to do is we want to go over to GitHub or whatever Git manager you use and just, you know, uh, submit everything. So everything so far, and I'm going to control enter and control P to save or push to origin. Sorry. And now our Svelte website with all its code has been uploaded to uh, GitHub. You don't have to worry about all these files. They do not matter for you. All you have to worry about is the fact that in our source routes, we have entered it's that's what you have to care about. And that's what we're going to upload within five minutes straight to the web that anyone could access anywhere in the world instantly. Now that's pretty cool. But what we have to do is we actually have to go over here to this website called Vercel. You could use Net Netlify or GitHub pages. I like Vercel. It's very simple. I'm not sponsored by them. And what you want to do is sign in with GitHub because we are on GitHub and we're doing everything via GitHub. Once I've signed in via GitHub, I am going to go over here to my project dashboard. As you can see, Vercel.com, and it'll give you like your project dashboard. As you can see, I have a lot of projects. But what you want to do as the viewer, you want to go to project, and you're going to see it loads up all your projects. Over here, a simple Svelte website. I'm going to go click import. And what I'm going to say is my code is actually in the root in this simple Svelte 5 app. Uh, the reason it's in a folder below is because I started the project at this root level, and all the code is down here. As you can see, so we just have to do that. It's totally simple. What you want to take away is just look for the Svelte icon. When you click edit, go to that Svelte icon and click continue. Once you have that, you can click deploy. And once you click deploy, almost 99% of the time, if you have no changes to the project, except this, what you should see is your project running on the internet 
And if not, it's a very simple fix at the moment because Svelte 5 just came out. There is a small issue where you have to change the adapter as it's talking about. As you can see over here, it's an issue. But if you read the build logs very quickly, and if I zoom in, and you can see over here, it says that my build failed. And that's because I'm using an unsupported node version. I'm just going to zoom in again for the highest quality shot for this. But you can see I'm using version 22.11. Vercel wants me to use node 18 or node 20. Apparently, if you're starting a new project, there's no real way to go to the project dashboard because you haven't made your project yet. But it's very simple. If you go over here to the notifications and click the first notification, you'll be taken to your project dashboard. And over there, you can figure out how to go to the settings of that project by clicking the path over here or this um, breadcrumbs. And you can go over here to settings. And once you're over here in settings, you can scroll down and you can specify the node version and click save. Once you do that, you can go back to your project and you could do a build log or you can go over here to everything so far or whatever commit you had. And you can essentially tell Svelte to redeploy. If I could find it. Oh, over here, up here, redeploy. And what you want to do, you can use existing, don't use existing build cache ever. Just use a new one every single time. And you can see is we have it building and we can check the build logs and we can see where it's building, uh, what commit we're using, et cetera, et cetera. And once this is done, I'm gonna scroll down and speed this up. And once this is done, you can see that we have a deployment summary that we use felt kit, static assets, functions, blah, blah, blah. And we can go over here to our actual web site on, online. Like I'm going to be putting this link in the description so you could check it out. Um, and we have our spelt kit website working. So that's pretty cool. We're going to talk about that later, but we have our website up and running. So that is technically the five minutes that I'm going to be explaining how to get up and running with spelt kit, but I'm going to give you a little bit extra and I'm going to show you how you could do basic modifications or basic aspects with spelt kit, such as uh, what we're going to do is obviously make a button. If you're wondering how I knew how to make a button like that, I implore you to go study the basics of HTML. What I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom in a bit. I'm going to hide my terminal, which by clicking control tilde, I'm just going to push this over to the side a bit and I'm going to be making a button that you could also try. So if I zoom over here to my website, you can see we have a button here. It doesn't really do much yet because I haven't typed in any text, but we have text now. And what happens if I want this button to do something? Well, I'm going to click F12 on my keyboard to open up the dev console and put it down here to the side. I want to bring this up and I'm going to make a simple script. So I'm going to click and enter a few times and I'm going to go over here and make a script or a script tag. What this essentially allows me to do is program my HTML. So I can make a variable here called let, I don't know, count equal, and I have to make it equal to state and I'm going to put a state of zero. So the initial state is zero and state is just a very fancy, fancy way of saying var. If you're coming from Godot, which is what I do a lot of content on, Godot has var, this is state, and essentially this allows you to change this variable and get updates. You could, realistically, you could do this, 100%. You could do, if I could put a semicolon, you could do this, although semicolons aren't mandatory. Uh, if you could do b equals four. There is nothing wrong with that. However, the small issue with b equals four is, if I try changing it with the button, it won't work. So I'm gonna make a simple function here called const, and I'm gonna do when button is clicked, and or blicked, let's do blicked um, just for fun. And I'm gonna make an arrow function, which is some fancy JavaScript function notation. It's the exact same thing, 100% the exact same thing as saying func something and then doing this in Python with a pass like this after you, after you click tab here a few times. This is the exact same thing as doing func or in Godot, it's the exact same thing as doing func something and then doing this and then this and like this in Godot, it's the exact same thing. Well, in JavaScript, we just like saying const and then defining the function name, equal brackets where you actually pass in variables and uh, then arrows, so equals greater than and then curly brackets, this is where you could do stuff. And to test how things work, you could type in console.log something. So something, uh, something was pressed. And if I go over here to my website, you can see that uh, nothing is working and that's because I just have to give a, this page a quick refresh and I'm clicking text, nothing is working. Why is nothing working? Well, let's think about it. I'm not doing anything with when button is pressed. This button over here does not do anything. So what I have to do is I have to do on click and not cur not uh, quotations, but in curly brackets, I'm gonna paste in this function name, exact same thing. And now when I press, you can see I'm getting everything working. That's pretty cool. I have a button working. Uh, amazing. Now, can I do something with that button? Yes, I can actually tell my count to increase. So I'm going to do count plus equals one. And 
I if I just uh, control S to save my page or my script, you can see I'm pressing text and I'm getting everything the same. Something was pressed. Why am I not getting anything new? Well, it's because I'm not showing count anywhere. Or let's, you know, just to make things easier, I'm going to call this estef, estef, estef. And over here, I'm going to say estef, estef, estef plus one. And over here, I'm going to put curly braces to actually like embed my text. And you can see over here, Svelte is screaming at me for saying, why did you just put random uh, curly braces in really fancy Svelte terms. This is a way for us to evaluate JavaScript into HTML. So convert variable math into text that people can see. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to just paste in astiv, 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 which is my variable. And you can see over here, we have uh, a button working, which is pretty cool. But let's say I want to use text input instead of a button. Well, what we could do is we could actually do a, a less than sign input and then type equals text. And you can see over here, um, GPT is already kind of giving or chat call violet or whatever Microsoft wants to call it is already giving me some values and ideas, but I'm going to do value or we'll just do a simple text input for now, just so we get the basics down and cool. We have our basics or our, we have a simple text input, but how do I actually make it show some text? Well, what I can do is I can go over here and I can, I'm going to come back to B, but what I can do is I can do let, um, you know, uh, random text I type equal to state once again i'm going to do parenthesis quotation marks curly um, and then close parenthesis and this is how i define my var this would be the same as saying var b equals or var something in godot or python or whatever uh, is equal to uh quotations that's the exact same idea we just have to say state to make sure we know it's reactive oops and a reactive is a very fancy way of saying i know that when i change this variable it will update on my website if I don't use state, it will not update. And I have to do some very fancy stuff to make it update. We do not want that. We want it to be simple, clean, fast. And we're going to be using dollar sign state. That's all we have to know and care about right now as a beginner in Svelte 5. So random text I type, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to say value is equal to random text I type. So that means if I change this value here, control S, it changes over there. That's pretty cool. Except let's say I do the exact same thing with um, over here with my account as I do with my uh, random text I type. And I, if I try typing, you can see nothing happens. Why? Well, in Svelte, to make something actually change, you have to tell Svelte one more time, hey, bind this value to the value that this text input gives you. So text input is over here and text input has some data. There's a variable over here. To tell Svelte, put this val data into this variable, bind. You have to write down bind. I'm kind of writing bind with my finger there. And what you can do now is, Oh my God, look at that. It works. These are very two important things that you have to know. And I'm going to keep it there. I'm going to keep it simple. I'm going to see how this video does. If it gets some bad reactions, I will not continue with Svelte, but I just want to do a like Svelte five minute video plus like a few extra bits. And that's all I'm going to be showing. And this website is going to be live online, which I will show. So if I go back here to my changes, you can see all my beautiful code that I typed. In fact, I'll magnify just so you can see it better. I want to type in update page Svelte. So this is going to be, or you know what? End of video, under video commit. Oh, and I'm going to type in big stuff done today. Horrible git commit message and push. I'm going to control P to push. And what you can see right now is if I go over here to my, um, if I go over here to my Vercel dashboard, and if I go to deployment over here, deployment, if I go to deployment, or if I go back to this path over here, you can see it's building and it's happening in real time live. And we can see if we scroll down, it's done. It's building deployment summary, blah, 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 adding custom domains. There's no custom domains. I'm not going to put a custom domain on this. But if I click it, we can see we get a version of our website where we have text or our text button increasing and we have the ability to type in inputs. That is crazy. We did this within like five, 10, 15 minutes. I'm not really sure, but this is a very simple way to get up and running in 2024 at 2025, I guess, the start of 2025 on how to get up and running with Svelte 5 or Svelte Kit. I use Svelte Kit because that's the same thing as Svelte 5. Basically, if you if you get into the nitty gritty, there's differences, but this is just a very simple way to make a website. And if you wanna see more of this, let me know. If you enjoyed it, let me know as well. I don't really care if you subscribe and like, um, have a great day. If you just, can sh if you do Alt Shift S, the formatter comes up and you can see over here, if I just click enter, it automatically likes to put a semicolon for me, cool. but. Uh, to get back on track.